Black Box Radio, the Rona Report, we got Dr. Cleo Monago. Say hey to the people. Good evening, everyone. How are you? All right. Now, they should be acquainted with you, but some aren't. Tell them what you do, who you, how you function in the community. If we weren't in this crisis, what would you be doing? Okay, well, I'm still doing what I do, though it's similar to what we're doing now in terms of the high-tech interface using um, Skype and uh, Facebook and other types of um, technology to actually communicate right now. So I'm still doing counseling and stuff, but my background is a behavior scientist. I'm a behaviorist, focused primarily on Black life culture and history and the context of our living in this society and its impact on our ancestors and the unresolved present impact of having lived in this country for 500 years or so. And um, my, my work is primarily teaching Black people to decode white supremacy. Pardon me, that's not my rule. Yeah, yeah let's, let's hold it. Hold, yeah. That's real, real right there. We got dogs. <laughs> we got the dogs. It's cool. You at, you, you, hey. Hey, it's not that barking. It's all good. She don't like racism either. Stop that bark. As soon as you say white supremacy, she's yeah. like, I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> Smart dog. <door. laughs> Smart Sorry, uh, I am at home. But anyway. <laughs> Wait, yeah, it's all good. This is authentic. I love it. Go ahead. Uh, but anyway, yes. Um, to put my perspective in context, as some of your listeners may have heard, as far as I'm concerned, Black people are in a white supremacy impact trauma trance. And we have been told to assimilate and adapt adapt to a hostile. Well, I'm sorry. Hold on. (laughs) On cue. Every time you say it. (laughs) Don't you say white supremacy. (laughs) Come here. Come here. (laughs) These are black people I'm talking to. Come here. Oh, Oh, Lord. Come here. I love this. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we got to have some humor in the Rona report. Real talk. <laughs> What's the dog name? Let's interview the dog. What's the dog name? Oh, girl, I say her name, she going she gonna to think I'm talking to her. And uh, oh, Okay, okay. So we're not, and she is a girl. Okay, you all right. She's a girl. I'm sorry. Yeah, she, she's a girl. She's a girl. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna keep on going. Anyway, um, based on that perspective um, and the research and observations I've made, which back up my theories, if you will. I do work to teach black people to, and parents in particular, but all black people, to decode the impact of white supremacy on the black psyche. That's the white supremacy in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm not telling you to do this. I swear. I'm going to say W H I T E S U P R. If she's black now, I'm out of here. <laughs> so, um, that's pretty much it, kind of a nutshell, except for the interruptions of what I'm about. Right. I mean, hopefully more will come out of the context of our discussion. Okay. Okay. So what, at this point, um, when it comes to this crisis that we're in, coming from a uh, psychological behavioral standpoint, when it comes to the Black people have unresolved trauma anyway. Yes. From just being black in America. And yes. now we have this enormous crisis amongst us that is, and amongst everyone, because this is a human crisis yes. amongst everyone. And we're all affected. And now we all have to be human and look and try to protect each other in, in some way. Yes. And um, how is that when it comes to the resolve, the, the trauma that we already have, how do we package all of these things? Well, the only trauma that the coronavirus incident is creating mm-hmm. is among people, and, th- and this is across race, but of course, when white people get a cold, we get the flu, mm-hmm. but it's economic. Um, it's true. From my perspective, it's been a mixed bag. Some people are glad to get a break. Um, some people are concerned about the interruption of their cash flow. Mm-hmm. Um, some people are concerned about the interruption of their social life, and there's some people who aren't even take, who aren't even quarantined because they don't believe anything is real wrong or or real problematic. And you may have heard 
the rumor that uh, somebody started was that black folks were not particularly at risk. Did you hear that? No, of course. No, we're, we're superhuman. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I heard that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and the the, ori- the uh, initial mapping, geographical or global mapping of where Corona was breaking out seemed to indicate that. Um, China, whose numbers have gone down greatly in terms of their capacity to manage it, mm-hmm. and Europe, who's still facing a major crisis, mm-hmm. uh, were all over the Corona map. But Africa was was pretty invisible. Of mm-hmm. course, two or three two or three weeks later. Well, not two or three weeks, two or three days later, um, there were spurts of it recognized on the continent. But still, frankly, the numbers are relatively low. Mm-hmm. To, I mean, we're talking about two here and five there. And a brother, a friend of mine who lives in Nigeria told me today that the majority of the people who are impacted by Corona over there are officials. The majority of the everyday people are not dealing with coronavirus in terms of there being incidences. And I'm sure they've created amazing immunities, being people of the earth. And they're uh-huh. strong and healthy, they eat well. So um, it's a lot to say about that. And there are, to, to be clear, so we won't be over, um, so we won't protect, so we won't not protect ourselves. There are some black folks in the United States who have died from, from corona across yeah. the age range. Now, comparatively, even here, most people have not been black, but there have been black people who have passed from coronavirus complications. Yeah, we can't make it a color. We can't make it a gender. This thing is dangerous. It doesn't have an age. It's relentless. It's dangerous because we don't know. I mean... And and, and, yeah, we have a lack of leadership to to actually do something really substantial that's going to, as they say, flatten the curve and slow it down. But that is... um, it's serious. And we got to, the first thing we, we're programmed to worry about color and uh, worry about gender. We need to just, this is just a human problem. Everybody could die. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how we got to roll and start worrying about who's dying and understand that everybody can. And, yeah. and it's, and we got to get our mind right and our behavior has to fall in place. And so this, um, I, I urge everyone to self quarantine, Stay in the house, eat from. I mean, I even see people buying food out. I don't even think that makes sense. Delivering food, and I hate to say that for restaurants, but we don't know who have this thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the part that's scary. Even though, frankly, yeah. yes. the population, a lot of us have not really grasped the seriousness of it, mm-hmm. and it's all across races. Let me make that clear. Because this is invisible. Yep. You know, there's no, I mean, I went to the hospital for, I happened to have a physical before coronavirus that was scheduled before coronavirus at a hospital. I went on to get one of my physical and I spoke to doctors there and they don't, they, they don't have a clue. Mm-mm. They don't know how it's impacting the body. They don't know exactly what the risk factors are. They don't know how to treat it. They don't know. So that's what makes it scary to those who are in the know regarding what is not known. They have no baseline. They have nothing to compare to, you know, templates. It, it's, it's just something came out of the blue. Yeah. Well, it's not the blue, just came out of where it came out of where it came from. And there's no chart. And yeah. you have to create it. And people have to die for them to create it. And that's just what's gonna and that's just what's happening. Collect samples, um, apply data start testing, antiseras, uh, and they just have to start dealing with it. But it takes a minute for that to happen. And unfortunately, we if that's going to happen, we got to have materials here. We got to have ventilators. We got to have hospital beds. We got to be able to house these people. So it's a lot to think about. I mean, it's a lot to think about. Um, so. Well, Maryland's uh, governor has been on. Yeah, everybody said everybody liking um, Hoagie Ho. So, um, and, and I give it to him. He has been proactive. He has yeah. been, um, he's, he's deferring to scientists. <laughs> um, I love what he's saying. I, I got to give him, I'm, I'm not a fan, but I definitely, in, in concurrence, that he's doing an absolute awesome job from what I can see. Yeah. I mean, I haven't studied it closely, but I do know, I happen to be in my car driving when it came on the uh, air that, he had been out the previous day. Maybe it was St. Patrick's Day or something. I don't remember, but he was out 
And people were like, after the coronavirus announcement, people were still in the streets like there was nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. And he got on the radio the next day and went off. Because he, he knows, he sees it. <laughs> yes, and he said, I will make this policy that you have to stay in the house because y'all ain't getting it. <laughs> and every day he comes out and shuts something down. Yep. Every day y'all want to go, okay, I'm going to shut something else down. <laughs> Every day he comes to that podium. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. You're going to wake up. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I get him. He's like, listen, I see the numbers. And, you know, these guys are getting brief real numbers, real stats, real data. They see it. You know, we're looking at what they release via the news. Yeah. But um, they're seeing real numbers. And this is just really scary. Um but you have to stay resolute and just keep pushing and just be as yeah. safe as possible. Yeah. But the but the but in terms of your question, the response has been mixed. You know, some people are enjoying this chill. I've heard people literally say that of all ages, I'm talking about black folks. Mm-hmm. Um, and and some people are they can't really fathom that there's a there's a daily crisis because most people don't know anyone. Facebook is changing that though because people putting their, their people's on. A guy on there was like his brother had it. I was like, wow. Yeah. But that's but not cool. real to people yet. It got to be somebody they know. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, and there's been um, other variables regarding almost everybody who's died. They had some other some other health issue, or they've been elderly, or they were dealing with some other type of um, pre-existing condition. Yeah, so. At least that's the word. So because of that type of terminology, um, people have not taken it serious, even though Dr. Fauci said three days ago, it's going to get worse. Mm. I, I just, yeah. I bristle at the thought that um, the carnage that it can leave behind if we don't act and, and really um, push it into a corner and uh, stop this movement, test everyone. You know, we need drive through clinics. We need a we need a lot of movement that's not happening right now. They're talking about Easter, but it won't be no Easter bunny because he'll be he'll have Rona. Let them keep it up. <laughs> yeah. Real talk. Yeah. I mean, they need to get their mouths right. I mean, Trumpy is losing his mind. You know, yeah, well, you know, Trumpy is being Trumpy. See, I, I almost I, I look. I might get on your nerves talking about Trump because see, I'm tired of hearing about Trump because <laughs> me too. Trump has been Trump the whole time. One thing you, c- you cannot say about Trump he's is that he's not than anybody. Yes, he's, he's being new, brand new, as they say. He ain't being brand new. He's being Trump, who's always been Trump. And he, when he was running for president, he was being the same person, and they let him in. So I agree. I agree. Okay. We better sit here and make sure that we are not breathing other people's air and that we're watching out for folks who are sneezing. And, and if we're sneezing, sneezing to our arm, mm-hmm. to our arms and make sure that we're not spreading anything and watch what we do. Because that's what we can control. That's true. You got to wash your hands. You can you can only control your space right now. And the space is so limited. You should see, you should be very good at it. Yeah. Because <laughs> trust me, you're not doing much. So yeah. to be able to control your space and um, I don't know. And we're just going to stay positive. So um, are you working on anything while you other than like seeing your virtual space with your business? Are you working on anything? You're going to write about five books. What you going to do, bro? <laughs> well, I'm working on one book that's taken me forever to complete. OK, um, I'm doing work on that. I'm also doing some radio and TV stuff. I'll be on rolling shows coming Friday. OK. Um, in a studio six feet from him. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, and, you know, and, <laughs> and others of us on the show will probably be coming in by Skype, but I can't stand doing uh, video shows on by Skype. So I, I'm going in the studio. I hate you. Right. Yeah, you got some masks. Please, you got a mask. Yeah. And I, one thing I'll be doing, this is kind of trivial, but I, I'm going to do something I rarely do on film, and, and that's where I had a cat. Because I, I can't get my coif done. In the yeah, you can't get your haircut. No, I can't get no haircut. And I don't know the camera without a haircut. This is going to be the first time. You got to get a kufe then. This way a kufe. That's what's up. I mean, that's your style anyway with your African. I'm wearing a kente cloth cat. That's what I'm wearing. <laughs> oh, the one the one I met you with? Lord. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm going to have on that. Yeah. I'm going to have. Okay. That's what's up. Well, yeah. we're glad that we didn't need 
that part. We just needed your voice. So we're, wow. good, we're good yep. over here, Black Box Radio. Tell Roland I said hi and box up. I'm going to need you <laughs> box up. Get on the Roland Report. What's up with him? <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> oh, you got you to gotta ask Roland. You know, hey, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's your boy. Tell your boy, holler at your sister. We'll talk. <laughs> In the box. <laughs> but anyway, let's move on <laughs> because this is Corona. This is serious and we're talking yeah. serious business right now. So, all right, we're at the um, portion, you know, we always do a last will and testament. And so I want you to lay a jewel on the folks, get their mind right. While as we walk through this uh, ama- amazing event that we're experiencing in our lifetime. Okay. Well, one of the concerns that people have had is this thing called social dis- distancing. And there's people who are feeling shut in, uh, lonely, uh, co- uh, unable to connect with people and feeling sad about that. And one of the things that has created a barrier to people doing something that you all of us are old enough to remember, which is call folks, is people have got, got used to test to texting. And I've been telling people, including making a short video about it, a PSA about it, that it's time to go old school and actually use your vocal cords and call people and make human connections that are in real time and not be texting during the social distancing period. Mm-hmm. Particularly if you're feeling isolated and you're feeling concerned about not making contact with people, then don't just text, call them. Even if, and if you want to talk to more than one friend, there's free conference call technology out there that you can use to talk, to have a, you know, have a, a talking party, if you will. But my point is that instead of allowing yourself to be demoralized by the lack of human touch, listen to the human voice mm. and take advantage of your friendships and call people and check in and say hi. Do not use texts right now as a primary means of interaction, particularly if you're concerned about isolation. Excellent. That's something to say. Use the voice as we are using yes. voices to communicate. Amazing. Dr. Monago, we definitely appreciate you. Every time you lays it, every time you never disappoint. Well, thank you. I appreciate you both as well, and it's always a pleasure. All right, G. Yes, thank you so much. It's really great to chat with you again, talk to you again. Um, and if anyone else, we this is our second conversation that we've had with with Dr. Monago. So you can see all of our other conversations, as well as the rest of the Rona Report at blackboxradio.com so make sure you check this out that's b-l-a-k b-o-x-x r-a-d-i-o dot com you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Black Box Radio All right. so we are uh, closing down the Rona Report it is 325.20 we have Dr. Cleo Monago This is Black Box Radio. We out. Peace.